Hey there, this is Mr. Icarus, and welcome to yet another edition of Doom Mod Madness. This time around, we are checking out a mod by the name of Aliens Eradication. Fear not if you're suffering from a mild degree of deja vu, because I have in fact covered multiple Aliens-themed Doom mods in the past here before, that being Aliens TC, Aliens Colonial Marines, and Aliens the Ultimate Doom. This is yet another to add to that particular pantheon. And one of the first things you may notice about Eradication is that it's got a fair tinge of Alien Trilogy to it, and that is certainly no coincidence, considering a fair portion of this is built on the foundation of the Alien Trilogy mod, which I believe was released by Contra Commando. Obviously, the source for all that is the PlayStation 1 original, the weapons, the sprites and textures, certainly the music, which you may be able to hear tinkling away way atmospherically in the background, but the more identifiably eradication part of this, authored by Payload, is made up of the map itself and the classes that you can use within it and how they affect the gameplay experience. So for setup purposes, this all takes place in a second colony located on the doomed planet of LV-426. It's not entirely clear whether this takes place before, during, or after the events of Aliens, but if it takes place after, that just makes my view of Wayland yutani as a corporation grow even dimmer in terms of sheer greed and stupidity. As you can see, however, we are relatively well kitted out when it comes to taking on the Xenomorph threat. We've got auto turrets, we've got pulse rifles, we've got a slightly wonky line of sight that means as long as that turret can see a face hugger in a tube, it's going to keep firing till it runs out of bullets. So yeah, remember to close them viewports. And of course, we've got the motion tracker, which works admirably well here. I like how the face hugger in a tube is basically your false positive for this section. So if you're ever backtracking through this part and you get a blip, you may crap yourself briefly before realizing that yes, it is just that damned face hugger in a tube. Nothing more, nothing less. Oh wait, is that a Xeno I hear? Probably. But that's one of the aspects of this map, this mod even, that just works exceedingly well. It builds tension. It's really, really well paced to such a degree that the longer it goes on without you spotting a Xenomorph, the more anxious you get because you know it's just a matter of time before that hammer finally comes down. Couple that with some legitimately great environmental design, some fantastic use of sound effects in the quieter moments, and you have yourself a scenario where you'll occasionally find yourself quite literally jumping at shadows, only to discover it's a bundle of cables dangling from the ceiling. But I think one of the most impressive aspects I found about this level in the demo version of Aliens Eradication is just how intricately it all links together. It's laid out in such a fashion that it expands and opens up in multiple ways as you progress through the level itself, and it doesn't exactly constrain you to any one critical path when you enter. Sure, you could go the way that I went, you could go somewhere else completely different and actually make a beeline for the keycard that you need to progress, but once you use that keycard, you'll find that it's not just the door that opens, vent access opens, new spawns for enemies will appear and unleash, and by a certain point, you will just have chaos raining down upon your head. You're probably itching to see what that chaos looks like, aren't you? Let me show you. So this section was friggin' great. Up until this point, the map had been playing fairly softly, softly with me, giving me largely manageable handfuls of Xenomorphs to deal with every now and again. This was the first point where it truly cuts loose and just sends a swarm careening down the hallway towards you. I was very glad that I remembered I had a turret. I kind of panic placed it, but it turned out to be a very good decision. But I did forget that eventually the turret does run out of bullets, leaving you to fend for yourself. And I was very reluctant to plunk down another, fearing that I'd have another swarm to deal with later on. This actually turned out to be a fairly well-founded fear, because it's all adrenaline from here on in. By this point, you'll have opened up a fur chunk of the map, you'll have gotten the keycard that leads to the final section, and all of the vents have opened up, all of the spawns will have been unleashed, and you will just be frantic, making sure that you remember your route, where you need to go next, and keeping an eager ear out for that blip on the old motion track, and not to mention a very distinctive sound cue that plays whenever a vent is broken, be it by yourself or uh, something 
less friendly. But yeah, this initial experience, this first run through with the mercenary class is probably one of my favorite experiences in an Aliens themed Doom mod so far because as I've already said, it's exceedingly well paced and it really puts the fear in you. You get to the point where you are legitimately thinking, holy shit, that is a lot of xenomorphs. I am very outnumbered and I'm not sure if my supplies are going to hold out. And adding to that ever so slightly was the fact that I think my HUD in the version that I have here is ever so slightly bugged to the advantage of the mod itself in a weird way roundabout way so you'll notice that I can't see my health I also can't see how much ammunition I have left save for what's currently loaded into the gun I have equipped and this actually lent a extra degree of tension to the encounters I had to deal with here it actually worked in favor of the feel of the mod itself so accidental or otherwise I think there's a case to be made for limiting the amount of information that's available to a player it certainly increases the anxiety but maybe a few little indicators here and there wouldn't hurt for example maybe a critical health indicator in absence of a percentage of what you've got left would still maintain that feeling of not knowing right up until those final desperate moments and while I'm at it, the flashlight, as lovely as it is to have in those darker environments, I find it does end up being a tool that actively prevents me from taking advantage of the flares that you have access to here. So maybe the flashlight should be more of a finite resource, something that runs down over time and takes quite a while to recharge. And that way, the flares get a little bit more use, the lighting can be a little bit more atmospheric, and the fear can be cranked up a little bit higher. Earlier I mentioned that depending on the class you pick, you'll be able to switch up your experience with Aliens Eradication, and nowhere is that more apparent than with the Wayland Operative class. This is a class that essentially puts you in the bad guy role. Not only are you there to quell the Xenomorph threat, you're also there to ensure that there are no survivors, witnesses, or evidence. Intriguingly, picking this class will also alter a few elements of the level geometry too, and this is largely to help facilitate the tweaked style of gameplay you'll be engaging in here, what with enemies that are able to return fire. And to that end, you'll see that the hallways are littered with a few more bits of cover than they previously were, allowing you to duck behind and avoid those volleys of bullets headed your way. And you'll also discover that there are additional storage closets located throughout the map. Now, with the previous class, there was, as far as I could tell, one storage closet that you could gain access to for additional supplies, and that required tracking down a red key card located in a secret. But with this class, you will have seen that mercs will drop red key cards, giving you access to these storage rooms. The only thing that's really left for you to do is locate them yourself. It's safe to say that there is an extremely noticeable difference between playing as this class and the initial mercenary class. There's noticeably less xenomorphs to deal with, but you will find that every now and again on killing a merc, a chestburster will pop out, an enemy type that I don't think I encountered at all during my mercenary playthrough. It was certainly a class that made me feel a bit more gung-ho, a little bit more confident in my playthrough, but that could have been the fact that I started with a flamethrower. It could be the fact that I'd already run through the level at least once at this point. On what feels like the complete opposite end of the spectrum to, well, pretty much every other class in this mod, is the Colonist class. This starts you off with nothing but a handgun and a song in your heart. Also no armor. You forget how important armor is until you play as the colonist because you know that acidic blood yeah it really friggin stings when you're playing as a colonist this is the kind of class you'd pick if you're after the more survival tinge experience you're certainly going to be doing a hell of a lot more scavenging you will be poking your nose into every available part of this map in search of additional supplies additional ammunition and certainly bigger and better guns. Hopefully on picking this class you'll at least have a few runs of this map under your belt because I can only imagine the sheer panicked flailing of a player that picks this as their initial playthrough. That's not to say that there's no advantages whatsoever to picking the colonist as your starting class of choice. You'll find that other colonists are friendly to you during the course of the map. 
I only really found them during the course of this section, but I did find that the additional firepower they provide, albeit brief, was much appreciated. Much like the Mercs, they can occasionally drop a red supply closet keycard, and if you're unlucky, one or two of them will spew a chest burster on death. Rounding out the classes is the brick shit house known as the Combat Synth. This guy comes equipped with a smart gun as standard, as well as 200% armor, meaning that he doesn't so much flinch in the presence of acid blood, he practically bathes in it. It's certainly a class that imbues you with a first sense of confidence. I dare say, in my case, overconfidence when it comes to dealing with the Xenomorph Swarm, because as it happens, I was laying it on a little too thick with the smart gun. I can't help it. I love the gun. It's full of DACA, and as a consequence, I ran dry at a point where I really needed to rely on it the most. Consequently, this turned my combat synth run into more of a scavenger synth run as I tried to figure out an effective route to pick up more smart gun ammo. Thankfully, I had a pretty reasonable idea of where I could find some. Unfortunately, I forgot that this was right on top of a big fat swarm spawn. But honestly, it's situations like this where the level design of Aliens Eradication really shines. Those frantic moments where you're desperately trying to escape the swarm and find that there are multiple ways in and out of nearly every section of this map thanks to the way in which it's honeycombed with vents. It means that you never feel like you're being unfairly pinned down, that you can still beat a retreat to a different section if you've got enough time and level knowledge in your head, but at the same time, the Xenomorphs can track you down, they can take advantage of all the same routes that you can, and boy, boy is it a lot of fun. So yeah, considering that this is only available in demo form at the moment, I would still easily recommend Aliens Eradication. I've gotten so much fun, so much mileage out of this single available level with the four classes that you can play as that I am now really, really hopeful that work will continue on this and that there will be more levels available in future. If there's one aspect of this, however, that just leaves me hopelessly intrigued in terms of how it may potentially develop, it's the fact that depending on the class you pick, you'll actually exit the level through a different point than the others. So if you play as the Merc or the Operative, you'll go out through the same exit. But if you play as the Colonist, a side door opens and you exit through that instead. The Combat Synth, he actually goes out through an elevator that you need to mess around with a generator for. And even this text changes depending on the class you play as. And I'm just wondering where that could lead. Whether there's a plan for different classes to actually have unique levels that maybe join back up at a certain point. That just sounds crazy, like a lot of work, and also something I'd really like to see at the same time. So, yeah, I'm going to be keeping an eye on this one for a while. Things could get pretty interesting, but if you find yourself similarly intrigued in Aliens Eradication and you're eager to give it a whirl for yourself, then you'll find the link, as usual, in the description below. While I'm at it, I'd like to give a great big thank you to my wonderful patrons over on Patreon. Thank you so very much for supporting the channel and for helping to make content like this possible. If you're interested in lending a hand yourself, maybe you'd like to see your name in the credits, maybe you'd like to gain early access to my videos before anyone else. Well, if that's the case, you'll find the link to my Patreon page also in the description below. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, feel free to let me know what you thought in the comments, and feel free to suggest any mod you'd like to see me cover in future editions of Doom Mod Madness. This has been Mr. Icarus, thank you very much for watching, Icarus out.